This I wanna nail sports to the one Top blog out of the YouTube channel No matter which sports here we got it covered Subscribe and hit the notification bell What's up my wonderful peeps? Sports to the bone here again man Shout out to all the viewers Subscribers and the followers Big up on yourself Alright my viewers and subscribers So I have a couple of stories that I want to share with you guys Now there's this article floating around on the Sportsmax website you know, it was actually published, I think, yesterday. But because I was zooming in on the resumption of the ODI tour, I didn't get a chance to look at it. So I, I am going to be talking about it now. You know, where they are talking about um, West Indies fans are excited, but there is a lot of work to be done by the selection panel. And there is a lot of work to be done by the coaching staff. So I'm going to be reading some of that article. And I was also listening an interview from Nicholas Poran that was posted on the west indies website and i also think that is very interesting a couple of the things that he said so i am definitely going to be looking at that but before we go down into all of that my viewers and subscribers and marks in you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me please also turn on the post notification bell and leave a like and a comment all right so this article on the sports max web website says interesting times ahead for west indies cricket big decisions facing coach new selection panel Right, and this article was written by Reds Pereira and Tony McQuatt. And in it, they are saying it has been an interesting start to the 2022 New Year for West Indies cricket. The first days of 2022 having produced some exciting appointments to the West Indies selection panel. And they say ongoing fitness concerns surrounding at least one key player as well as a few enlightening comments from head coach Phil Simmons. So we have started off 2022 with a bang in terms of West Indies cricket. So basically they are saying the appointment of Sarwan and Desmond Haynes you know, is expected to, to, to really bring about a good change because these guys are well respected within the region and also in the wider cricketing community. And they are, they, they, you know, people respect them as high caliber um, people that would have played the game at the highest level. Right? Um, let, let, let me, as I said, guys, it's a long article. I'm just going to take out a couple of the, of, the, of the key pointers out of it. You understand? So they said the announcements of their respective appointments would have created a sense of optimism that some of the bizarre selection choices that were far too often characteristics of the previous panel would now be um would now not be re um, repeated with the West Indies um about to begin and they say with West Indies about to begin its all important quest for qualification of two forthcoming World Cups this year's T20 as well as the 2023 50 overs um wisdom guided um world world cup they say wisdom guided selection of the um uh, is necessary to make sure that um the best team is selected basically right they say haynes and sarwan appointments also seem to be indicative of cricket west in this decision to continue with the panel with the panel's three-person um composition right with head coach phil simmons as the additional selector i I, I don't know why my viewers and subscribers, but I don't really like this three panel selection. I, I would prefer like a six or a seven. You understand? I This thing where they have two or three, two main persons and then the, the head coach, I don't like it at all. I like to have, um you know, at least six or so people on a panel. So when you are selecting a team, there should be a whole lot of discussions. You should not just have three persons putting in their opinion and then it's done right there. As I said, my viewers, this is me reading the article and giving you my commentary in between because, you know, this is what we do, you know. We don't really vlog our, our, our thing like that. We do commentary. So this is me dropping in my thing. So as I, as I was saying, my viewers and subscribers, I can't, I, I don't really believe in this three-person pan, this three person, um, thing, this three-people panel thing. I, I, I believe in more. You know, I, I am thinking that if we are selecting an international team, then it, it shouldn't just, it shouldn't just be, the case where a man, three persons just come together and just talk and talk and then that's it. You understand? I, I, I like, I like, um, I like to know that you know players are are well, are well thought of. People look at it and scrutinize things. But anyways, let me, let me, let me, let me go. 
So they say um, it will it will um, indeed be very interesting to see what the panels decide, you know, um, in terms of the of the of the players. They say regardless of its final uh, membership size, one of the issues this the new selection panel will have to address almost immediately is that of the continuing issues surrounding the fitness of West Indies cricketers. So they say both Haynes and Sarwan would have been um, alarmed by the reported failure of two West Indies selection um, contention players, uh, Shandopai Hemraj and Shin, uh, Sh Sh Shimran Hetmaya. Right, they said these two guys weren't able to, to come up to par in terms of the fitness test. So they will definitely need to take a look at it. And, you know, they are saying with these guys like Hitmeyer in his mid-twenties, it's really not a good look. You know, they, they went on to say, no, still only 25-year-old. Hetmeyer was West Indies' leading run scorer in their disappointing 2021 D20 World Cup campaign. He has, however, now been left out of the West Indies ODA and T20 squad to play Ireland and England after failing the, the Guyana Cricket Board fitness test. I tell you now, guys, <laughs> I, I am big on fitness, but there is definitely something wrong. If one of the man, if the man in the team that is considered not to be fit is able to top score all the while, boy, I don't know, Rasta. They say head coach Phil Simmons' reactions to hit my most recent fitness failure was described um, as we know. You know, he, he, he was saying that it was very heart-wrenching and very frustrating and that the young man is letting down the team. You understand? Um, the writers also went on to say that, you know, um, people like the, the younger players that are there, they need to get fair chance and fair opportunity. Um, we see a big quote here that is highlighted. They say, everyone has to be treated the same way and tested in identical manner on the same day, at the same moment. It is being used to select whoever the, the, um, the CWI want to have included in respective teams. So, you know, that, that is what um, I think this quotation came from Radford. So, why Toby Radford, my viewers and subscribers, you know? Um, his, that, 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 that is what he had to say about it. But as I said, guys, just go on the, on the, on the, um, the Sportsmax website and see if you can, you, can, you can take a look at this article. It's very, very interesting, my viewers and subscribers. Very interesting. And, you know, they, they, they would have touched some very interesting points. You know, some of the things that we would have discussed on Sports to the Bone um, live show. So, let's take a look at it. So, all right. That, that one was very, very, very high, high tempo. So let me finish off on a much relaxed note. We see where I'm West Indies wicked keeper batsman Nicholas Puran, vice captain of the T20 team, you know, also was saying that um well he did an interview, was basically talking about um coming through the West Indies um system, playing youth cricket right up to now being the vice captain. You know, he had a little sit down and he had some encouraging words for the youngsters. You know, he was saying that it has been a very, very um, good journey for him, a tough journey also, a lot of lessons on the way. You know, he, he gave props to people like Bravo and Pollard for really shepherding, shepherding him and showing him, showing him the way. You know, he said that right now he gives thanks to, to Bravo, who was the captain, I, I think, of the Trinidad and Tobago Red Steel's team when poor and me um, got his debut. I think he was around about 17 when he made his debut and... Um, I think he got about 50, if I'm not mistaken. I think he got 50 in that game. You know, um, you know, he spoke about Pollard being a role model. And you know, just talking about the, the entire youth system growing up in it and, and things and things that, um, you know, that he would have achieved so far and what are some of the things that he's looking forward to. As I said, it's a very interesting interview, guys. I've just given you a couple of pointers out of it so you can check it out. You know, I was talking about um, going into the into the into the under under nineteen World Cup. Last one where he decided that here what he's going to try and set a goal of being the highest run scorer of the tournament. You know, alongside being one of the best batsmen in the tournament. I mean, he might have not achieved being one of the the, the, the well the highest run scorer, but he definitely um, would have gone on to be one of the the guys that would have made it to the world stage. You understand, we, we see, you we also spoke about, you know, the chance that he got to lead West Indies um, team, captain the team at age 25, you know, and he's saying that he's looking forward to playing a whole lot more game for West Indies, 
You understand he's 25 now, so 10 more years from now he's probably going to be around about 35. There about, you know. So we spoke about the lowest point of his career, you know, getting into that accident and thing, and being in the hospital and all of that, you know, saying the senior players stood by him and, you know, it was a really interesting interview my viewers and subscribers and we know poor and to be a very humble and a very calm young man so you can imagine when he's um doing a sit down he's you know sit down interview is composed you know, he spoke eloquently and i must say it's an interesting watch just as all we had the the, the the bravo interview the other day i mean bravo touched on some 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 points of west indies cricket that you know that are very troublesome but an interview like this will give you some 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 light into how poor and came through and what his mindset is like now. So just check it out, my peeps. Gonna leave this one right here for now. Big up on yourselves, eh? Yourselves,